السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي. Praise and thanks to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. We see guidance from Him. من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له هادي المرشدا whom ever deviate or reject the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he and she will never find guidance and whom ever accept the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never be misguided وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله and I bear witness that there is no God but Allah worthy of worship and to be followed. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasoolah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa habibuhu wa safiyah wa aminuhu ala wahihi adda al-amana wa balaga risalah wa taraka al-nasa ala al-mahajjati al-bayda la yadillu anha illa halak. And I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the best of the creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was the one that Allah has trusted to give the revelation and the teaching of Allah. And indeed I bear witness that the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam indeed has left us with a straight path, with a clear guidance. Only those who really reject the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be misguided. Whenever we have a tragedy or we see violence, um, in particularly in, in the Islamic countries and nations, it, I mean, any, any human being can't help but to have to think. What is it that triggers, or what is the common denominator in all these countries that are really leading to all this violence? And we have to also reflect on this fact and to give an excuse for non-believers to think of Islam as a violent religion. Because after all, all Islamic countries are different in culture, different in language, different in backgrounds. So for an unbeliever, all they see is the common denominator is the Islam. That's you know to try to understand where they are coming from when they generalize that Islam is um, a, viol a, a, a violent religion. And part of it is actually our fault. So people do not go and read about Islam, but rather look at the action of Muslims and draw these conclusions. And also as Muslims we have, whenever we are fine, uh, faced with any difficulties, the Prophet ﷺ has taught us to seek guidance in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also to seek guidance from the example and the sunnah of the Prophet. The Prophet says in the final speech, I have left you with two things. As long as you are holding on them and following them, you'll never be misguided. These things are the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet. So today I would like to share with you for a few minutes how do we address both this accusation or these conclusions or you know whatever term you want to call it anti-Islamic or Islamophobia or whatever the terms that's occurring and also we have to follow our own guidance to solve and to to really um, deal with this with these difficulties let's take a look again we go to uh, the Prophet has asked us to, to to go to the Quran and the Sunnah to find guidance so we go first to the ayat of the Quran and we look into the Quran is this indeed a violent religion? Is that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Quran? But you open the Quran and all its ayat and orders for the believer to be, to be um, uh, of a good manner, to be uh, merciful, to be kind to all man mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that to summarize the message that he has sent the Prophet with that I have, I have sent you only to perfect good manners. 
And indeed, I have sent you only to perfect good manners. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that we have sent you mercy to all mankind, believers and disbelievers. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took this ayat and practiced them. Which is, I think, as Muslims, that's where we are lacking, the disconnection between what we are reading and the teaching and the principles, and whether we are really implemented these principles into our actions. I think that's where the problem is, and we're going to see it through the new next few minutes that I will share with you. The Prophet ﷺ, 14 years, struggled for the da'wah in Mecca. 14 years, he was suffering day in and day out. And we know all the stories and the, the hardship that he was faced with from the kuffar when he was trying to call them for da'wah. The Prophet ﷺ, when he went to the Ta'if to call people to come to, the, to Islam, um, basically there were three leaders, one of them, they, and he was, insulted him basically repeatedly. They even ordered the kids to stone the Prophet. What Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as he was really leaving trying to avoid the stoning of the kids of the Taif. And in that process he was injured and then as we, he, he walked for almost 30, 30 kilometers from Taif toward Medina and as he was exhausted he said by a tree Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sent two angels to him. Jibreel came to him and said, Oh Muhammad I have came to you with a message from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and Allah has sent with me the angel of mountains. Order us. What do you want us to do? <coughs> this is a man who has been stoned. This is a man who has been insulted. And the prophet at that time was in his 50s. This is not a young kid who can tolerate a lot. And the, the angel of the mountains says, Assalamu alaikum Rasulullah. I... I'm coming to you with an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, order me. Give me an order. And he went on and gave a suggestion. He said, if you want, I could, there are two mountains in each side of Mecca. He said, if you want me, I will kind of put the two mountains together and destroy them if you want. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was injured and insulted, what do you expect from him? If he was a violent, if he's given a violent message, he will say, indeed, do it. Because these people are for 10 years now not following and not obeying the orders and not accepting the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did he say? And that's the first lesson that we should, that we should really um, learn. Mercy even in the enemies. And that's what the Prophet did. In Ma'arakat Uhud. The Prophet sallallahu again was injured, four of his teeth were broken and a piece of metal went right into his cheek when they described it that to take it out basically the Sahaba was cut, had to, you know, could not pull it with their own hands one of the Sahaba has to bite in it to pull it out and his uncle died in that war he was standing injured, he had an injury in his knee his head was broken, four of his teeth were broken, and a piece of metal, piece of metal in his face, stuck in his face. And he sees the best companion around him dead. What did he do? If this was a, if the Prophet ﷺ has a violent message, that is the time that he would pray to Allah to take revenge from these people. What did the Prophet say? He said, Oh Allah. Forgive my people as they do not know better. At that time when he is bleeding, injured, seeing the best of his companions are dead around him, he is constantly praying for these people. He said, oh Allah, forgive them as they do not know better. We know a lot of stories about the Prophet. For the sake of time, I would give a few more stories and stop here to go to the next step. When the, the time came in where the Prophet had to send troops outside the Medina to defend the Medina from an attack. He gave them orders. While the troops are ready standing to go to fight, he told them, do not kill a child. That is the order. Regardless, without the, even if they carry weapon, do not kill a woman. 
do not cut a tree or burn a, far, a farm. And then the final thing, do not disturb a prayer, regardless of our religion. So these are the teaching of our Prophet. And these are the principles of Islam. And these are the principles that we should stick to. And this is the Islam that we believe in. Is when you send a troop, the troop are ordered not to even disturb a prayer. I'm not saying kill somebody who's praying. I'm not saying destroy other religion houses. He said do not disturb a prayer. Do not kill a child and do not injure a woman. That is the, the rules of the Prophet. And again, just to confirm what Allah says about him, that I have sent you mercy for all mankind. The Prophet, the prophet throughout his life, show us a lot of examples of mercy. And we see that throughout the war. And the Prophet indicate his Sahaba to conduct in that way. The Sahaba after him said the same example. So what is the problem today? If we can stand here and claim in this masjid that we have a very peaceful religion and these are the ayat and this is the Quran, open the book and show me where does it show that you should kill, you should be violent except for defense and for reasons. Islam is not a passive religion. It's a religion that gives you the right to defend yourself but with rules. Not to hate in general. One uh, story is one of the young people that the Prophet sent out in a troop came back to the Prophet and after a victory, he came back and he sat right by the Prophet mm -hmm. and he was telling him, you know, how did we do it? He said, we fought them, they were trouble our numbers, but we showed them what Islam is, we were firm in the ground because we believe and they had no belief behind them. And in the description, this young man was telling the Prophet that there was work, this, so, this uh, man from the, the enemies were killing Muslims right and left. And he said that I went to him, and when I was fighting with him, he fell from the horse. And he said I went to him to attack him, and I, he describing that the man was holding the sword, and the blood of the Muslims is still dripping from that sword through his hand as he is on the floor. And I said I was about to hit him, and he said, I be a witness, I, I be a witness that um, I, I basically I la ilaha illallah, there is no God but Allah. And he said, I looked in his eyes, and I looked the blood of the Muslims still dripping in his hand. He said, I knew that he was not telling the truth, he just wanted another round to go back and kill Muslims, so I hit him, I killed him. The Prophet stood up from his position. And keep saying, Oh Allah, inni bari'u min martakab. Oh Allah, I am free from what this man had done. He said, How did you go to his heart and learn that he was really not telling the truth? Did you go to his heart? And the Prophet left the masjid praying to Allah, I, Oh Allah, I am free from what this man has committed and walked outside the town out of fear that he killed one. In our Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, killing one soul is equal to killing all humanity. The examples of mercy or the orders of mercy is filling the Quran. Page by page and ayah by ayah. After all, this is guidance for all mankind. The Prophet sallallahu as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he was sent mercy to all mankind. He showed that through all his examples. The Sahaba after him display an example for us that this is not only a message <coughs> that can be written in a book and not be practical. This is a message, it's not only a message that can only be carried on by a prophet. This is a message that can be carried on by believers and humans. And that was Sahaba set another example to us for decades after Islam. It was always that Islam spread into the whole world basically because it was a day, the, the, the dean of justice, the dean of fairness, and it was the dean of peace and rahmah for the alameen. 
We are having a problem right now as Muslims in all aspects of life. Not only in, in, in violence and wars, but also in all aspects, everything. You look into our <coughs> conduct in business, you look into our relationship among ourselves and our relationship to others, it is not what the Islam is teaching us. And that's, I think, where the gap, where the problem is. Until we practice Islam as a, as a deen, we are always going to be in problem. Right. Islam is not a religion, and I say that and I will repeat it. Islam is not a religion. Islam is a deen. Religion is, if you open the dictionary, is a, a belief and rituals that are done, you know, done inside a specific place. Deen is covering all aspects of your life. How you talk to people, how you get married, how do you deal with your own kids, even how do you enter the bathroom and come out of the bathroom. Mm -hmm. How do you smile in, in, in each other's face. But nowadays we are letting our emotion and the part where the shaitan is controlling and following our own nafs, when nafsu ammaratun bisu, and then that's where this is developed. What you see in the Islamic countries, it is not an Islamic action. Beheading people and killing people, it's not an Islamic action. <coughs> the Prophet <coughs> has given us advice after advice in many <coughs> examples how to take care of the captured people. And it is very sad to see Muslims even killing each other's kids in revenge. Is, the, is that is the, how the Islam taught us? The Prophet said not to kill a kid, even for the enemies, the non-believers. Now, in Islamic countries, we are killing our own kids. Shocking. Even non-Muslims or even animals would not behave in that manner. Animals do not kill for revenge. What have happened to these people is as they deviated and they deviated away from the teaching of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they became who they are. If they were to stay as Allah has ordered them, then they will stay in the path and they will not see this violence. After all, this is the most peaceful religion. Allah says also in the Quran, do not let the aggression, the injustice, that is done on you by others to prevent you from doing justice to others. Are we doing that as Muslims? No, actually what's happening in the, in, 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 in the old Islamic country, all this violence that we are seeing, it's not Islamically. And we have to distinguish between Muslims and Islam teaching. Islam teaching is very clear and I encourage people, especially the young people here, to understand the, the real teaching. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that I have created you or I have made, made you as a moderate nation. So you'll be witness in other nations and the Prophet will be witness on you. In other words, I have made you, given you a, a moderate religion and the Prophet will be an example for you and you should be an example for others. So we should really start to learn what is the Islamic teaching and following it and condemn any action that goes outside the Islamic uh, teaching. Until we do that, we are not doing ourselves a favor because we are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are not spreading a da'wah and we will you know, eventually will be asked about the time in our hand to try to teach others about Islam. And you can apply that to all aspects, all problems that Muslims are faced with. Go back to the Quran and see what are the teachings of the Quran. <clears throat> Go back to the Sunnah of the Prophet and see how did the Prophet um, practice it. Look at the Sahaba, how did they you know, carry on with these teachings and these principles and put these principles into life. So we have the Quran, it's in its original form. And that is one of the favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given uh, this ummah, the Muslims. Because we still have the book in its original form. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I'm, I, I send the message in the Quran 
and I am taking the responsibility of protecting it. So we have the Quran in its original form, we have the, pro the, the, the Sunnah and the example of the Prophet wasallam, almost like a, uh, to prove to us that this can be done and the Sahaba after the Prophet took this teaching and implemented in life and you can see that the Prophet <coughs> came to an area of jahiliya, an area of violence, an area of injustice, an area with, with where there was no morals. Convert that area to become the people of a perfect manners where they went and they spread this manners and this teaching to the whole universe. Only when we are, you know, deviated from the Quran and the teaching that we gonna find ourselves back to Jahiliyyah. And that's exactly what's happening right now in the Islamic nations. We are deviating from the Quran and so we are back to Jahiliyyah. Umar al-Khattab said that we are people that we have dignity and honor in Islam. If we seek honor and dignity in something else, mm -hmm. that will be degraded. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who will really look into the Quran for real guidance, <clears throat> who will look into the example of the Prophet for real example, and to follow these <clears throat> teachings, and really to <clears throat> spread the teaching of Islam, and not to accept what's really happening among Muslims to be the real Islam. Islam is one thing. We need to go back to Islam. We are deviating away from Islam and we will find ourselves in Jahiliyyah, which is exactly where the, 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 the society that the Prophet came to bring them back to light. And what we see is happening really in the Middle East is very sad. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide them and to really bring all of us back to hold on to the robe of Allah, which is the Quran, and to follow the Sunnah, where the Prophet said, I have left you with two things, my book and the Sunnah, as long as you follow them, you will never go astray. And he is who Allah said about him, O my antuku anil hawa, indeed, he does not say things from his own desire. He, that's his, whatever he teaches us is indeed, Revelation and wa'af from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pray to the people who have died and you know pray for us inshaAllah to follow the kitab and the sunnah and jazakumullah khair.